Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Seafoam Lace Cardigan. So this cardigan is not like your typical sweater cardigan with sleeves. This is more kind of along the lines of a poncho cardigan or a kimono cardigan. And this is super simple, very approachable for um, an advanced beginner or a confident beginner because we're just making two rectangles and that's it. So if you can make rectangles and follow some relatively simple pattern instructions, then you can make this cardigan. So the first thing you're going to need is the free written pattern. Go ahead and click the link down in the description box and it will take you to the blog post that goes with this pattern where you will find all of the written instructions. Or you can purchase a large print ad free printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. So first of all, you're going to need to choose a size. And for this pattern, because it's made of rectangles and because it is designed to be very oversized and drapey, um, instead of the nine sizes that I normally do for a women's garment, I'm doing this in three size groups. So we have the first size group is for extra small, small, and medium. That's basically the first size. Then the next size is for large, extra large, and 2X. And then the size after that, or the third size, is the 3X, 4X, and 5X size. So this is basically kind of like a big cardigan-shaped poncho, and it doesn't have like any sleeves or anything on it. So it's meant to be very loose, very drapey, very summery and breathable. So um, because it's just oversized, it doesn't really, you know, have to be um, close fitting. Then we kind of combined sizes together. So there are three sizes for the pattern and you can choose which size you want to follow according to the measurements given in the pattern. So if you watch my video on choosing the best yarns for summer items, um, this one was one of the yarns that I mentioned in that video. This is Red Heart Super Saver Ombre, and this is a worsted weight yarn. I have the 10 ounce skein with 482 yards in it. And the reason I chose this yarn is because it has a very smooth texture. It does not feel anything like regular Red Heart Super Saver. If you've never tried this particular one before, it has a very smooth texture and it is not scratchy at all, even before you wash it. So if you're thinking um, the, the regular Red Heart Super Saver, believe it or not, this is like a totally different yarn, even though it's under the same label. So this one just kind of has a gradient to it, and this colorway is called Spearmint. I'm using one skein, and I am making the smaller size, or the first size, which is the extra small, small, and medium. So you're also going to need a U.S. size L, or 8 millimeter crochet hook. This is a clover hook, and it's plastic. And you're going to need a measuring tape some scissors, and a yarn needle or a blunt tapestry needle. I use these little metal ones. This is a chibi bent tip, and these are my favorite. So we're going to use this for weaving in ends and for sewing up the seams. All right, so we are going to start out by making one of our panels. This cardigan is made of two kind of long, narrow rectangles. And so we're going to make one panel at a time, one rectangle at a time. So what we're going to do is, let me kind of explain how this works a little bit. Imagine our cardigan as kind of a rectangle or square like this, except there's a slit in the front, which is where it's open in the front, and then there are slits in the sides for the armholes. So basically we're making a rectangle on this side that starts from one end, goes up and over the shoulder, and then back down to the back of the garment. And then we're going to make another rectangle for the other side that starts on the front at one end, goes up and over the shoulder, and then comes back down the back of the garment. So that's why the panels are so narrow is because they're only half the width of the finished garment and because they start at the front hem and go all the way up and over to the back hem. 
So we're making those two rectangles, and those two rectangles are going to be seamed together down the center back and on the side seams. And those are vertically hanging seams. And because we are crocheting in the same direction as the panel goes, so our rows don't go this way, they're going to be going this way. So because we're crocheting in that same direction as the seams are going to be, then instead of starting the work with a foundation chain, we're going to start with a row of foundation double crochet. So we're not using a foundation chain at all here. And the reason is because a foundation chain doesn't have enough stretch to it to match the stretch that's in the rest of the fabric. And when the edge does not have as much stretch as the rest of the fabric, then it's not going to hang the same. So if we use a foundation chain here, then the center back seam and the two edges along um, the, the front, those edges are not going to hang straight with the rest of the fabric. They would be kind of um, bunched up. And we want them to lay smooth and flat and match the rest of the work. So what we're going to do is use that foundation double crochet, which is not hard to do, but it, it basically works the row of double crochet and the foundation chain underneath it at the same time. And it's not the same as just working a foundation chain and then a row of double crochet. When we do them both at the same time, then we get an edge that is just as stretchy as the rest of the fabric. So this will help the back, the center back seam and both front edges of the cardigan to lay flat. So if you're not familiar with the foundation double crochet, I am going to kind of demonstrate it real quick here, but I have an entire video on that. If you want to go check that out, the link is in the description box. So we're going to start out by chaining two. And then we're going to work what's very similar to a regular double crochet, but it has one extra step in it. So we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna skip this first chain and insert the hook into the second chain from the hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. We now have three loops on the hook. At this point, it looks just like a regular double crochet. But to make the foundation chain part, we're going to yarn over, pull through one loop. That's the chain. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over, pull through two loops. So that makes the um, foundation double crochet. That makes the first one. So now, for the size that I'm making, I need to work 114 more foundation double crochet. So to work more of these, we have to build off of the one that's already here. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to turn the edge of this upside down so the bottom edge is facing. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the base of the previous stitch. And it looks kind of like a regular stitch because it has a front strand and a back strand. But it's basically the base of the previous stitch. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop. Again, I'm going to yarn over, pull through one loop for that chain part. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So again, I'm going to yarn over, turn the edge upside down so I can see the bottom, insert into the two strands of the base of the previous stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So if you want more information on this, like I said, I have a whole video just about the foundation stitches. And I even have a free printable uh, cheat sheet with the photo tutorials for all of the foundation stitches, if you want to go and check that out. But for now, for this video, I'm going to continue working my row of foundation double crochet. So I had one, which is the very first one that we did. Then once, once I did the first one, the pattern tells me to do 114 more. So I'm going to continue making foundation double crochet until I have a total of 115 stitches, not including the chains that we started with.
Now keep in mind this number, the 115, is only for the smaller size. So if you're making a different size, then you will need to reference the pattern and get the correct number of stitches to work with for the size you want to make. All right, so I now have all of the stitches that I need for my first row, and this is my first row. It does not count as the foundation chain because it does include the first row of double crochet. So now we're going to move on to row two. And for row two, we're going to turn, and we are going to begin our rows with a chainless starting double crochet. Now, this is a, a special stitch that looks like a double crochet but performs the function of a turning chain. So instead of chaining three to get up to the height we need for this next row, we're going to work the chainless starting double crochet. And if you want more information on this stitch, I do have a whole video about that. The link is in the description box. So to work the chainless starting double crochet, we're going to stretch the loop on the hook until it is about the same height as a regular double crochet. Then I'm going to put my index finger on the back of that loop and kind of press it up against the back of the hook. Okay, so now we're going to kind of yarn over with the stretched out loop here. So we're going to bring the hook forward, down, and then back out so that we've kind of made a yarn over with that loop. I'm going to insert my hook into the same stitch my yarn was coming from, yarn over and pull up a loop. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So that is what our chainless starting double crochet looks like. It looks pretty much just like a regular double crochet, but it works like a turning chain. So this will help keep our edges very straight, and it will also help with the usual wonkiness that you get out of starting your row with a turning chain. Either the edge bubbles or else there's little holes in the edge, and this will eliminate both of those things. So now what we're going to do is we are going to double crochet in each of the remaining stitches all the way across, which for the size that I'm making, which is the smallest size, that's 114 double crochet. All right, so that's the end of my row two. And now we're gonna work row three, which is exactly the same, so we're gonna turn and we're going to work this chainless starting double crochet in the same stitch. So we're going to stretch the loop on the hook till it's about the same height as a regular double crochet. Use the index finger to hold that loop still up against the back of the hook. Yarn over with that stretched out loop. Insert the hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And yarn over, pull through two loops. So there's our chainless starting double crochet. And now I'm going to double crochet in every stitch all the way across. All right, so that is the end of row three. So now we are going to switch to a different row. And row four is kind of like a lace or mesh row. And that is going to um, allow some extra airflow to, th to blow through the fabric. And it will help keep it nice and light and breezy. So for row four, we're going to turn again. We're going to work that chainless starting double crochet in the same stitch. And then we're going to work a little sequence all the way across the row. So we're going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Again, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. And this is kind of how it's going to look all the way across. And we're just going to keep repeating that little sequence until we get to the end of the row. All right, so there we are. We made it all the way across row four. And you can see now that we have this row of little mesh um, holes or eyelets or little um, open squares. And that is our fourth row. So. It will kind of periodically give us kind of a break from the regular double crochet and it will kind of break it up into like vertical stripes a little bit. All right, so now we're going to work row five and row five is just as simple as any of the rest of these. We're going to turn, we're going to work at chainless starting 
double crochet into the top of the same stitch that our yarn is coming from. And in this row, we're going to double crochet in each stitch and in each chain space across. So if you look, the double crochets from row four, each of those is a stitch. Each one of these chain stitches or one of these holes is a chain space. So instead of working like inserting my hook into this chain stitch itself, I'm going to insert my hook into the chain space, which I personally think gives a cleaner look to each one of those um, eyelets. So then I'm going to double crochet into the next stitch and then double crochet into the next chain space, into the next stitch, and then into the next chain space, etc, etc, until I get all the way across the entire row. Alright, so I finished my row 5 and as you can see here, this is um, starting to begin the, the gradation into the next color. And so we're kind of fading into a lighter green. And so now that I have row 5 finished, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat rows 2 through 5 several more times depending on which size that you're making. So for the smaller size, I'm going to repeat rows 2 to 5 two more times. And then for the next size, the second size, I'm going to repeat rows 2 to 5 three more times. For the third size, we would repeat rows 2 to 5 four more times. So I'm going to go ahead and work rows 2 to 5 two more times for the size that I'm making, and then I will show you what it looks like. All right, so I have finished repeating rows two to five, the correct number of times for the size that I'm making. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat rows two to three one more time. So basically we're going to work that row where we just double crochet all the way across. We're gonna do that again two more times and that will be the end of our panel. All right, so that is my last row. I finished um, that repeat of rows two and three one more time. And what that does is that kind of mirrors the number of rows on either side of this eyelet row. So in here, we have three rows between eyelet rows. So after row five, which is this one, we worked two more to create the same number of rows on this side of the eyelets. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the yarn, leaving a good yard of a tail. You want it kind of long because we're going to use it for seaming. And then I'm going to tie off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat all the same instructions to make the second panel. Alright, so I've got both of my panels here and they are finished. So what I have done here is on my first panel, I just started with a regular length tail before I began working my row of foundation double crochet. And on the second panel, I went ahead and left a pretty long, a good yard long or more tail before I started my row of foundation double crochet. And the purpose of this is that we're going to use this tail to seam up the center back and the two longer tails that we left at the end of each panel are for seaming up the sides. Now before we do any seaming, we need to go ahead and block our panels and this is kind of important because at this stage, this is the easiest time to block them while they are still laying flat. But once we start sewing them together, then it's going to be a little harder to block. Not impossible, but a little harder. So I'm going to go ahead and block my panels before I sew them together. So this yarn is an acrylic yarn, 100% acrylic. So I'm going to go ahead and steam block them. But if you are using uh, cotton or another, another type of yarn, then go ahead and watch my video on how to block your knitting and crochet. I'll put the link to that in the description box and it will show you all the different um, steps you need to take to block your work, whether it is made out of acrylic or some other kind of fiber. All right, so first we're going to sew up the center back of our cardigan. And 
I have right here both of my panels facing me. They're already blocked, like I mentioned. And um, I have the foundation double crochet edges together. So we're going to be sewing up these two edges to a point, and then we're going to stop because that's going to be like the back of the neck. So I have here both of the tails that we started with, and one of them is pretty long. So I'm going to use the long one that I intentionally left pretty long for this uh, for this seam. And we're going to whip stitch these two panels together. Now in the pattern, it even it tells you how many whip stitches to do because for every um, every stitch we insert our needle into on this side, we're going to insert into an, another equivalent stitch on the other side. So we're basically going to be stitching pairs of stitches um, together and um, we're going to stop when we get to a certain point at the, um, the distance from this bottom edge. So for the size that I'm making, the pattern tells me I need to whip stitch 50 pairs of stitches together. So I'm going to come over here to this first side and I'm going to pick up the very bottom of this first foundation edge stitch on the one panel and then I'm going to come over here and do the same on the other panel. And I'm basically just inserting into a pair of stitches, one from each side. And so that is my first stitch. And since I am working through 50 pairs of stitches, then that means I need to do it 49 more times. So I am going to be basically whip stitching because that's all this is. It's a whip stitch. But I'm going to be um, doing that to join these two together. And the um, when, I, when it mentions um, how many stitches you're doing, it's not how many stitches on, you know, both sides together. So it's not like saying, um, for example, 25 from each side. It's 50 from both sides, 50 pairs of stitches, 50 um, stitches with the yarn needle, so to speak. And each stitch with the yarn needle goes through a stitch from each side. So I am going to continue whip stitching this until I have done the correct number of stitches for the size that I am making. All right, so that was my 50th pair of stitches. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and give that seam a stretch just to make sure it has enough give in it so that it will lay nicely. And we're going to take one more stitch again through the same place that we just did our previous stitch. And then we're going to wrap the yarn around the needle to make a knot and pull it through. So that will secure the end of our seam. Now for the moment, I'm gonna let this tail hang, but um, I would go ahead and weave this in. I'm gonna weave mine in after I've finished showing you the seams. So if you were to hold this up the way it's going to hang on the body, right now you would see that we stopped our seam before the halfway point of our panels. And that is because this seam stops at the back of the neck approximately at the back of the neck, which is not at the same point as the center where the shoulders um, kind of divide into the front and the back part of the sweater. So we stopped a little bit below the halfway point to kind of give it room to open up and go around your neck, as opposed to um, if we went all the way to the halfway point, it would still open up and go around your neck, but then it would be shorter in the front. So this is why we stopped where we did. And now we're going to basically do what we just did, except we're going to do it for the side seams. So I am going to take, if you see here's the split for the neck, I'm going to take each panel and bring it down towards me like this. And then we're going to kind of scoot it down so you can see the corners. So I'm going to come down here and line up the two ends of the panel like this. And 
um, one end has the very long yarn tail on it, so we're going to use that yarn tail to sew up the seam. So we're going to do the same thing again here, whip stitching these two edges together, even though they are both um, edges from the same panel. So you can see we've got the fold of our panel up here, that's where the shoulder is going to be. And then this bottom edge down here is the hemline of the cardigan. So I'm going to take my yarn needle and I am again going to whip stitch these pairs of stitches together, one stitch from each side. And for the side seam, for the size that I'm making, I need to stitch 34 pairs of stitches. But again, the number will be different depending on what size you're making. So I'm going to stop after I have done those 34 stitches. All right, so that was my 34th stitch. And again, want to make sure that that seam has some good give in it, some good stretch. And again, I'm going to go ahead and take another stitch right through where I just did, wrap the yarn around the needle, and pull it through to make a knot. That will secure the end of my seam. And like I said, I will weave in the tail later. But we've essentially sewn up close to two-thirds of the... Um, the length of our side seam, leaving a relatively open armhole because this is kind of oversized and slouchy. So the armhole is a little larger than average, but that is um, that is supposed to be that way for the um, for the drape that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the yarn, but I'm going to go ahead and weave in the tail as well for this seam and the seam I already did, and then I'm going to repeat the same um, instructions for the side seam on the other side. So over here, I have this edge also lined up the same way. So here's the two ends of the panel, and then here is the fold at the top, and I'm going to do the side seam on this side the same way I did it on this side over here. So now that I have all of my seams finished up and my ends woven in, now my cardigan is finished. So you can see right here, here is the split for the front. And then here are our armholes over here. And then down here at the bottom, we have a straight, clean hem edge. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.